Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of the Dream Team, my name is Camden Kelleher. I will be presenting today with Dylan Foti, Matt Scanapico, and we will also be representing our group members, Michael Voigt and Eric Kirkona. Uh, so to get started, Ford is one of the largest auto manufacturers in the world. Actually, it's top five. Um, and a little bit about their history as a blue chip stock. Uh, a lot of Ford's history is known, especially within the United States. But they were founded in 1903 by Henry Ford. Um, and then shortly after, he developed the Model T in 1908 uh, and developed the assembly line to produce these cars at lower cost and actually incentivize his employees to buy the cars that they were producing to get the uh, company off the ground. In 1922, Ford purchased the Lincoln Motor Company, which we will talk about a little bit lately. It plays into our strategy. Um, and after 1922, Ford went through a tremendous growth cycle. Uh, in the 1940s, it developed what is now their best-selling line of cars, which is the F-series of trucks, most notably the F-150. Um, and then as years progressed, they developed more and more models, including the Ford Explorer and the SUV, and now today the Ford Fiesta, just as a couple examples of some models. They're in the low 40s as far as total models go for consumer vehicles. Ford also produces um, race cars. They're an Indy car. They sponsor uh, a couple different sports leagues uh, around the world, actually. Um, but the main focus for today is on the consumer vehicle segment. So if you look at their consumer vehicle segment, in the United States specifically, they sell the most of the F-Series trucks, which you'll see in 2013, they sold over 200,000 models of the F-150, and in comparison to the other models, the Escape being their SUV, um, the Explorer being another SUV, and the Focus being their most popular sedan, you can see the tremendous uh, amount of uh, F-Series trucks that they do sell in comparison. Uh, it's their bread and butter as they go forward. Um, so their core competency is this strong brand image. That's a lot of the reasons that they sell these F-150 trucks because there's a big association with F-1 Series trucks and the United States of America. So domestically, they're able to succeed with that. It makes marketing a lot easier. Ford has one of the top five uh, marketing budgets in the entire world for all companies. And when you couple that with an existing uh, reputation, it helps with sales. Um, and then their technical, technological strength, uh, they developed the assembly line. And since that time, they've continued to, progr to progress with newer and newer facilities, uh, as well as automation with these assembly line facilities. This has increased revenue. It's increased operational efficiency. and has allowed them to produce cars at a cost that other companies are not able to match. Going forward, looking at stakeholders, uh, overall, the customer drives everything that Ford does. They're trying to produce cars to get more consumers to buy. Um, their F1 series of trucks has obviously been the best for the customers. Um, and then employees are really who drive those sales, who create the products. Um, and this is kind of representing Ford as a company. Uh, and then investors are important for Ford as they're a publicly traded company. They have to generate revenue, but they've been very consistent as far as that goes. Um, so then there's executives which drive the strategy of Ford. Uh, and then in this middle segment, because of the size of Ford, um, their competitors are obviously concerned about Ford. Ford's obviously concerned about their competitors, both domestically um, and international competitors. The US government has a major concern for, the, uh, for Ford. We'll talk about in a little bit how they're part of the big three auto manufacturers that are a big part of the US economy. Uh, the media cares, again, because of the size of Ford. And then finally, at the bottom, while it's labeled least important here, they could easily become the most important potential customers that Ford is trying to target to get them to buy more products um, and to transfer over from some of their competitors. Uh, the current strategy is to produce cars that are uh, efficient, that have a great deal of this new technology, that keep up with R&D of their competitors, uh, but also that enter the market at a fair price point. Ford cars aren't the most expensive, they're also not the cheapest most of the times, and that's what they're really targeting. But that's a very saturated market because it is the largest segment of buyers. So competitors have become a concern for Ford lately. Um, always have been, but more so with foreign entrants, very important as of late. Um, they dominate the pickup truck industry. The F-Series has been uh, the leading pickup truck for the last 25 years. Um, and it also keeps with the American image as well as keeping up with R&D. They're trying to produce cars like hybrids and some electric vehicles, uh, which we'll push towards, but they have started to do that lately. But their main strategy is just to have their hands in kind of every segment of the consumer market, um, which brings us to uh, their representation, at least in the stock market lately. So 
Where you see the drop was a drop in the overall automotive industry uh, from 2006 to 2011, and then with the recession, it was a recovery period, uh, and that kind of hurt Ford. And what we're looking at now is how Ford's trying to recover. Uh, you'll see, even with their F-Series, their number one selling vehicle, the advertisement is finally great mileage without ordering uh, your engine off the kitty menu. So what they're trying to do is appeal to new and new customers when they say finally the F-Series has been out for forever, but they're trying to regain the sales that they've had in the past. In 2006, they capped at over 4 million in sales in, in units, um, and they're currently hovering right around 2.5, and that's recovering. Um, so the business challenge is now how to compete with these new entrants. To put it simply, we want to figure out how Ford can sell more vehicles outside of the F-Series trucks without losing any of the F-Series truck sales. Uh, one of the biggest entrants to the market that uh, poses a concern for this is Tesla with completely electric vehicles in the luxury segment. And to get a little bit more in depth with that, I'm going to hand it off to Matt, who's going to tell you more about the automotive industry currently. So the first important point in the automotive industry is the sheer size of the industry. Um, it's expected that 77.7 .7 million vehicles are sold in 2017. Um, so this is not only a large industry, but it's a growing industry. Um, again, it's important to classify the different types of vehicles within the industry. You have sedans, um, coupes, SUVs and crossovers, and then the trucks. Um, the trucks are actually the leading sector of the market as the most sales come from pickup trucks. Um, it's also important to clarify the engine power. Um, a lot of older vehicles, and even some today, uh, most today, are still gasoline powered, um, but there's an ongoing push to evolve into electric, tech, electric vehicles um, and autonomous vehicles as well. Um, that's something that's a little bit further off in the future, but many of these car companies are actually investing in this technology and planning for this in the future. Um, another important part of the industry analysis is looking at the alternatives to um, car ownership. Um, a lot of times, especially in cities, people don't have cars um, because there's alternatives such as ride sharing and public transportation. So these people are actually putting off buying cars, um, especially the, the millennial population. They are actually growing as a population and buying cars, but they're put, tending to put off um, car ownership and buying cars into the, further into the future um, when they're moving to the suburbs and relocating outside of cities um, and actually having a, more, a bigger desire to purchase these vehicles. Um, and then the biggest thing about this industry is it's very competitive. Um, the competition is really what fuels the industry, um, and mainly in the United States is the big three, which we'll talk about um, next. So, actually, in a, in a few slides. Um, but first of all, we want to talk about Ford and their presence in the market. Um, they are actually the leading truck sale and as well as the largest vehicle sale in the U.S. market. Um, it is the best-selling vehicle, bar none, um, pretty handily over some other vehicles. As you can see in this chart, um, the first three top-selling vehicles in 2016 were all pickup trucks. Um, and Ford, it by far almost doubles um, the Chevy Silverado, which is second. Um, pushing into the market is a new technology, uh, a new company, Tesla. They actually have such a large presence in the market um, as far as market cap. Investors are very positive looking forward um, as far as what this technology can bring. Um, they just surpassed Ford as the second largest automotive manufacturer by market cap in the United States. Um, and they are pushing to overcome this barrier of entry um, that most other companies haven't been able to achieve. Um, the high capital costs required, they're actually able to be penetrating the market um, and having success, and they're attempting to bring a mass market vehicle to the, mar to the, to the marketplace. Um, further going back to the competitors, um, the big three is the three main competitors in the United States. Um, this chart shows the top six, um, the big three being General Motors, Ford, and Fiat Chrysler. Um, then followed by Toyota, Honda, and Nissan. And as I mentioned, Tesla is a new entrant. Um, their specialization is totally electric vehicles. Um, that's something we're gonna have to rival in the future as the market shifts towards electric vehicles. So um, in, in order to shift this trend to electric vehicles, we have to look at what the customer, customers want. Um, the biggest thing is we actually looked at what Ford's strengths are and what's important to these car buyers. Um, so to look at some of the factors, quality and reliability is the top of the line um, as far as what car buyers look for. Um, and that's one of the big things that Ford has always had, their durability um, and the reliability of their cars. Um, they've always been long lasting vehicles and that's something they, they push very strongly. Um, and the next two categories, cost of ownership and fuel economy kind of go hand in hand. Um, they're, they're very important as far as cutting down costs, especially pushing into the electric market um, and especially even hybrids. Um, you're cutting down the cost of gasoline um, and other expenses that go with maintenance on the vehicle because these cars are actually more efficient um, on the road. 
And then the last thing that is very important to Ford, um, they use as leverage in their strategy as far as marketing and just an overall brand image is their brand. Um, they leverage that as just one of the longest lasting vehicles um, and is one of the most established companies in the world. Further diving down into the customer analysis, um, it's very important to see the trends in the industry. Um, there's a lot more research being done. It's actually estimated that 12 hours of research is done before even coming to a, a car dealership or thinking about purchasing a vehicle. Um, millennials are really pushing this, this search into the internet, the internet search um, to find out more information about the vehicles to be more efficient in the car buying process because the car buying process can take up to a month um, as estimated. Um, these, it's, a, it's a long process and in able to, to be enabled to find all the information needed, um, they're actually taking up so much time researching online and getting ahead of actually being able to pick these purchases. Uh, but an important thing to note is actually the demographic of most car buyers in the United States. They're actually, they're actually older and wealthier than the average American. Um, the average car buyer age is 51 years old and their annual income is estimated to be about 81,000, which is higher than um, the average American. So it's important to note that the luxury segment is definitely very possible for Ford to venture further into. Um, it's something that we can take advantage of. And as I mentioned, again, with increased millennial buyers, they may be putting off purchasing vehicles, but the millennial uh, segment is growing and they're purchasing more and more vehicles um, in the future, and that trend should be continue to grow. Um, now I'm gonna go through the SWOT analysis we, we put together. I'm not gonna touch on everything, but a couple of key points uh, that we're focus focusing on with some of the options we came up with and the strategy recommendation moving forward. Um, some of the big strengths, the R&D and plant development, quality products, brand, brand recognition, and a loyal following. These are some of the Ford's key strengths they always have focused on um, and something we can use to move forward as far as implementing new, new strategies um, and options. As, as far as weaknesses, um, one of the biggest things we focus on is underperforming luxury brand. They, brand. they have Lincoln um, as one of their sub-brands. That's their, Lincoln, that's their um, luxury line. And that although sales have increased recently, um, the brand has not done as well as they would have expected um, and contribute to the overall sales of the company. As far as opportunities go, um, there's definitely a lot of opportunities in the industry as far as ride sharing and autonomous vehicle technology. These are new technologies that are coming to the market and car companies are investing more and more into. Um, so it's interesting to see how this unfolds. And although Ford may focus on this, it might not be a primary focus. Um, and then threats. As I mentioned, Tesla is one of the biggest threats to the market. Um, they're very disruptive as far as bringing their technology and being a leader in the electric vehicle segment that's continuing to grow and it's anticipated to grow much further um, in the near future. And then autonomous and electric vehicle shift in investment and potential. Um, it's really something that's continuing to grow and all these car companies are continuing to move forward. Um, and I'm gonna talk, let Dylan talk about some of our impl uh, implementation options and so we can go with Ford. Thanks, Matt. Uh, so yeah, I'm talking about some of the strategic options we came up with. Matt just talked, told, talked to you about the landscape that Ford competes in. So now we'll kind of see how we're gonna uh, uh, navigate that. Uh, so one of our options was that we could leverage um, some of our um, fuel efficient cars, specifically the Focus, and um, hit those harder with advertising to target millennials. Um, and really bring out the corporate social responsibility aspects that Ford um, that's, that are important to Ford. Um, these are uh, things are also important to millennials, and uh, like Matt just said, that's a growing segment of the market, so that would definitely be uh, important to, to target. Uh, the reason we decided not to go with this is because we, with the threat of Tesla coming in, we just don't think it goes far enough to really expand um, our sales, our um, offerings, uh, product offerings. Um, the next thing we had was uh, to partner with a ride-sharing company. Um, specifically, we we're thinking about acquiring Lyft. Um, we wanted to do this because a lot of our competition is starting to do these partnerships. The reason we shied away from this is because this doesn't really address the problem that we're, um, we're talking about with the new entrants from Tesla, with our over-reliance on um, our uh, truck sales. Uh, we also said to invest in auto autonomous vehicles. Um, this is where the market's heading, this is the future. Uh, so there's definitely something that Ford wants to identify, but again, this doesn't exactly address the issue of um, over-reliance on trucks, uh, because this market of autonomous vehicles isn't gonna grow uh, substantially for a number of years. So we need something a little bit sooner uh, our last uh, strategic option that we came up with was to design a car 
to directly target millennials. So it would be uh, ethically sourced with um, you know, reused materials. Uh, it'd be cheaper, so that'd be more affordable for them and be very fuel efficient. These are all things that are very important to millennials. And as this segment grows um, in the car buyer market, uh, this is important for Ford to take into consideration. The reason why we decided not to go with this one is because Ford already has um, cars in this space, so it would be just redundant to have another low-end uh, uh, car on the cheaper side. Uh, so our recommendation is for Ford to launch a new uh, luxury electric vehicle under the Lincoln brand. Um, this solves our business challenge because uh, we can start diversifying our product offerings away from uh, just trucks. We can start to combat uh, Tesla, which is growing in the market. Uh, electric cars uh, help us to hedge against um, our current uh, you know, bread and butter, uh, which is very gas uh, intensive, um, very low gas mileage, electric would obviously compete with that. Um, and Lincoln uh, currently has really strong sales growth. Um, the brand still needs uh, some sort of a resurgence, and this would be a great way of kind of bringing the brand and uh, changing its image a bit by making it cool with this new luxury electric vehicle. Uh, so our implementation plan, we're gonna make a new model. It's gonna be similar to Tesla's Model X. Uh, it's gonna be a four-door sedan. It's also similar to uh, Lincoln's current uh, MKZ. Um, it's gonna be in the 55 to $80,000 price range. So this is a little bit cheaper than the Model X and a little bit more expensive than our current uh, MKZ. Um, and we're gonna spend uh, $172 million over the course of two years in order to, uh, to build out this platform with uh, R&D. Um, so for manufacturing, we're gonna use uh, Lincoln's current plant in Mexico that they use to build the NKCs. Um, this is a good idea because we're gonna, they're gonna be relatively similar vehicles, so we're, gonna be able, we're not gonna have to change that much. We're gonna be able to use a lot of what Ford uh, and Lincoln already has to make these uh, um, new vehicles. Um, we are going to have to invest a little bit into the plan, so we budgeted $142.3 million um, to kind of build out the plan for what we need for it. Uh, sales and marketing, we're going to invest $50 million in the first year. Um, the Lincoln EL is going to uh, debut at the 2019 Chicago Auto uh, Show. We're going to advertise the new Lincoln. It's going to be exciting, um, innovative. And we're gonna do this with a lot of um, internet ads, TV ads, and we're gonna buy ad space um, during the Super Bowl. So um, our implementation timeline in July uh, uh, this year, 2017, we're gonna start expanding the Mexico plan. Um, then we're gonna, in, come February 2019, we're gonna unveil the new Lincoln, uh, Lincoln EL at the Chicago Auto Show. Um, we're gonna begin production in August of 2019. Um, and then uh, we're gonna have our dealer education programs, October 2019, November 2019, we'll start our advertising campaigns to really get, uh, get this out there so people know what's happening. Um, we'll start hitting the market December 5th of uh, 2019. And then in February, we'll have our uh, ads to win Super Bowl. Uh, so some of the potential risks with this strategy, um, brand cannibalization is one of the first ones that comes to mind. Uh, Lincoln or uh, Ford already offers electric cars, and Lincoln already offers luxury cars. So there is definitely the risk that they could cannibalize each other. Um, we think this risk is minimal, though, because Lincoln or Ford's current electric vehicles are in the twenty-five dollars to $35,000 range, and the new car, the Lincoln EL, is gonna be in the fifty-five dollars to $80,000 range. So it's gonna be targeting a different consumer. Um, so there shouldn't be too much can, uh, cannibalization between those. And uh, this also applies to Lincoln, uh, Lincoln's luxury line, because uh, the MKZ, which should be the comparable, most comparable uh, vehicle that we have, um, is also at a lower price point. 
Um, whenever you have a new product, there's risk of product failures. Um, all the uh, auto manufacturers have had problems with this. Uh, Lincoln or Ford has not been quite as bad. Uh, you've seen GM who's had four of the largest um, auto recalls in the last 10 years. Um, so Ford just needs to keep this in mind and you know, make sure they're making quality products that aren't gonna have failures. And if there are, they have to react uh, appropriately. Um, product replays, um, whenever you're making a new product with R&D, you don't know how long it's gonna take. It could take longer than anticipated. Uh, again, you just have to react to however that happens. Um, and macroeconomic factors, uh, if there's an economic downturn, there's obviously a risk that people aren't gonna buy electric luxury vehicles that are at a higher price point than they could buy otherwise. Um, again, they just have to uh, adapt to, to the market and see, see how that happens. Uh, these are risks that could happen, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to happen. Uh, so our pro forma, um, some of the assumptions that we made is uh, in 2016, there were 17.6 million vehicles sold. And of that, 1.2% of them were electric vehicles, which comes out to about 211,000 uh, electric vehicles being sold. Uh, the average car price, uh, electric car price in 2016 was about 37,000. So we multiply what was sold times the average price, we get to uh, an estimated market value of almost 8 billion. Um, then we took this at a, a market growth rate of 25%. This is a pretty conservative number. They, they range from like you know, uh, 35 to like 20. So it's not quite in the middle. It's a little bit more conservative. Um, and with that, we come to in the year 2027, uh, about a $90 billion market value. Um, we took that, uh, our um, operating assumptions all come from Ford's current um, operating uh, assumptions that they, they're currently operating with. Um, and then we use uh, for its current WAC to come to a net present value of uh, $319 million uh, positive. So there's definitely a good plan for Ford to implement. Um, creates shareholder value, which is what we want to do. Um, helps kind of diversify uh, Ford and Licking's offerings. And uh, so that's what we suggest. Thank you.